It began with the Vietnam veterans, the wounded among them, who refused to disappear into hospitals and nursing homes. They felt that their country owed them normal lives. They spearheaded what was to become a new movement. The new militants are the disabled citizens of America, demonstrating as best they can. Finally, on April 28, 1977, Section 504 regulations were signed. In human terms, what did the law accomplish? One of the things it did was to provide some money for projects like this one in Houston, called New Options for Independent Living. The research director is Lex Frieden, who became disabled. I was 18 years old, and I broke my neck in an automobile accident. I was paralyzed instantly. Lex finished college while living at home, but soon began to want a more independent way of life. Out of his need, and that of others like him, a number of institutes for independent living have come into being around the country during the last few years. Places where disabled people learn to cope with a society that was not designed for them at all. While in some respects it might be easier to be taken care of than rather than be responsible for your own life, uh, in most respects, I think handicapped people would prefer to have that responsibility and, you know, the benefits of that justify the effort that's required to, uh, to put up with the day-to-day -day routine kind of hassles of, that we all have in our lives. Uh, because there's steps on the bus and, uh, instead of a lift. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I have no idea why they have a lift. Uh, there's, they give us many reasons. Uh, they do have some with lifts, though, but 80% uh, of them are inoperable. If Houston had some kind of a system, you know, a small kind of minibus that would come around like a dial-a-ride sort of thing to pick people up and then transfer them to a larger, uh, broader system with, with lifts and so on, so we could get around and do a and do work, you know, this is the whole, the whole story. Metro board members did an about face when they unanimously agreed to equip all new buses with wheelchair lifts. The federal courts ruled recently that municipalities are not required to provide such a service, but an act pending before Congress that will establish accessible transit to all riders has encouraged Metro to change directions. I think at the heart of this decision, was a notion that uh, what is uh, said in the board meeting that what this country really is about is the ability of all citizens to participate equally uh, to uh, the, the government's role is to give each of our citizens uh, a, a chance to make that contribution uh, of which he or she is capable and i feel just as good as she does about it she is Lori gurkin vice president of the coalition for barrier free living at Metro's board meeting, they announced they were dropping their lawsuit against Metro in light of the lifts being installed. We believe Metro's decision is an important step in the continuing effort to remove discrimination and create equal access for people with disabilities in all areas of life. Many people who have lacked access to adequate transportation will now have the opportunity to be more productive and less dependent on public support. Disabled Americans must become full partners in America's Opportunity Society. He was a compassionate conservative. Nobody knew what that meant. So they ran around trying to find a piece of legislation to show what he was a compassionate conservative about. And so they came up with the ADA. And that's how he actually endorsed it. Today we will be hearing about the progressive efforts of the Houston community in promoting greater access for all citizens and the relationship between these activities and the proposals set forth in this Americans with Disabilities Act. After years of planning, fighting, and debating, 43 million disabled Americans were given what they all along rightfully deserved, to be treated like everyone else. President George Bush signed the Americans with Disabilities Act, which eliminates a number of barriers for the disabled. And today's legislation brings us closer to that day when no Americans will ever again be deprived of their basic guarantee of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
The new law prohibits discrimination in employment, public accommodations, transportation, and telecommunications, and it includes a variety of sanctions for violators. Dozens of Houstonians made the trip today to Washington. Larry Gherkin was one. You know, it's costing $200 billion a year to isolate people and to keep people in institutions, and this legislation will enable us to get out of the community, to have jobs, to have access to transportation. And so when it comes to the ADA, Houstonians have real reason to have a, a strong sense of Texas pride. And of course, many other Texans have played leading roles in securing equal civil rights for the disabled, and no less list is complete without Justin Dart and, uh, and Lex Frieden. Each human being has an inalienable right and an inalienable responsibility to govern their own life, to participate in government of their society, and to be maximally productive. I chaired the uh, task force that filed suit against the uh, city of Houston to encourage the city to uh, order um, new buses, their new buses with lifts. And uh, what, what do you? What was the compelling? What moved you to that point? I mean, were you just frustrated because you'd been with this group that had been asking so long? And yes, finally... I mean, for 12 years we've been trying to get the city to order buses that had lifts on them, and the city was getting ready to order. 326 buses, I can't believe I remember that number, but I do. Um, 326 buses that were gonna be on the road for at least 20 years in the city of Houston. So that would have meant that 20 years there would have been buses that were inaccessible. And then after that, those buses would have gone to rural communities. And so for 20 more years, those buses would have been inaccessible. I didn't realize that you were thinking ahead so far as to consider what happens to our disposed vehicles after they're yeah. Oh, yeah, that off was the a, streets? That was a big decision. Yeah. So when the uh, uh, Metro announced the uh, change, were you surprised by that or did you think it would be settled? I mean... I thought we were going to court and I found out the day before the lawyer that represented us called me at home that evening and said, they've settled, they've agreed. And it made it was, you happy. I was very happy, very, very, very happy. You actually were looking for a job when you found uh, Houston's uh, transit issues, weren't you? I came to Houston Metro straight out of uh, college, graduating from the University of North Texas, North Texas State back then. And uh, so, yeah, I, I came looking for a job, started off uh, part-time employee making $7.25 an hour. Uh, happy to have a job and happy to help out. Uh, I was injured in a football accident in 1984, and who would have ever known that uh, many, many, many years from from uh, that point that I'd be at this point. Uh, so when I look at the video, I'm truly humble because I'm not only a, a benefactor and a trustee, but now when I look at the next generation, I'm becoming a mentor uh, to the next generation of, of advocates and uh, community service individuals. So. To me, the power of, of us coming together, that, that our advocacy abilities to create change within our own community, the realization that we deserve more. 